Good afternoon from the Restoration Garage. Today we're going to pour some Babbitt bearings for our 27 Packard limo. We thought we would do a few of them, let you guys see how it's done, and uh, tell you a little bit about it as we go along. We fabricated in our machine shop two molds for the bearings to fit in. This one, we've already put the uh, connecting rod in. As you can see, it's hanging out the bottom. It's already bolted in and ready to go. This one, we haven't put the other half connecting rod in yet. We wanted you guys to see what we were doing. As you can see, it's notched out to fit, and it's also spaced to put uh, the babbit on the sides of the bearing for the thrust. And of course, we've made it a little wider than it should be, so we can have some to machine off when we get to that point. First thing we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> put a little carbon on these. Uh, well, let me tell you about it before I do it. On these surfaces that that we don't want any babbit to stick to. And this this is the center pin that goes in to makes the half circle for the babbit bearing. And what we're going to do is cover these in carbon, and that way the babbit won't stick to them. And when we get ready to take it out of the molds, it'll come right out and it won't be a problem. So basically we're taking this plain acetylene, and you see how black it is. The guys blacked it up. And then you go, you get the pins the same way. Get both pins. Ooh, and you cut it off as quick as you can because it makes a lot of mess. So now as you can see, these have been sooted up. They're ready to put the bearing in. Not the bearing, but the bearing casing. And once we put the bearing casing in, we'll be ready to uh, start heating things up and, and pour these bearings for you. We're going to tap this bearing so it's in there fitting in the... We want it even in the, in the housing as much as possible. There's that. We're going to take and tight, finger tighten these nuts. They don't have to be really tight because if this thing heats up, it's going to swell anyway. Okay. And once we've got that done, then we're ready to put the pins in. And these pins are very black. See how solid black that is? So we're going to put that in here. And then we'll take this other pin, put it in this one. And other than getting my hands black, that's we're pretty much ready to go. So when we come back in a minute, we're going to have our Babbitt heated up. Here's a piece of Babbitt we were getting ready to melt. Thought, thought I'd let you guys see what it looks like. I guess if you painted it gold, some of my thing is a piece of gold bullion, but it's a piece of Babbitt, bearing, Babbitt material. And we're going to mix, melt it in with what we already have and be ready to pour this. We're back here at the garage again, and we have got our lead up to 475 degrees, which is about, it needs to be around 500. We're pretty close. We're getting this first one ready to pour. What we've got here is a temperature infrared thermometer, and this beats the old county ways of doing it. We want this mold to be about 250 degrees when we pour this, and right now that's plenty hot. I think we're good to go with this one. I'm going to lay my temperature stick down. I'm going to reheat this a minute to make sure it's hot enough. I think we're good. Get a little lead in here. The key to this is pouring it fairly quickly. See how it comes up and runs around? That was like a really good pour. That made it look so simple, I hate to show you that one. Most everybody will think they can do that at home. Fire this up just a little bit more. Make sure we got plenty hot. Reheat our labels just a little bit, make sure it's hot enough. I 
think we're good to go here. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah, that would be good too. Maybe put a little over on this side to make sure we got it off. That looks like we did good. So we got a good pull on both of them. Now we have to wait about 15 minutes till this cools off enough, and when it does, we'll pop the pin out of it, take the bolts out, pull the pieces out, and we'll show you guys what we did. So we'll be back in a few minutes after it has a chance to cool off. All right, here we are. We're going to do the other one. Oh, the bearing stuck did too. That's two in a row. All right, let's separate this one a little bit. That pulls right out of there. Ah, look at there. This one didn't turn out as good. We may have to redo this one. See the bad place in the bottom. Must have been a cold spot. So we will have to redo that. But you see, you see how we've done it. Basically, we've made these sides wider so when we get ready, we can machine the sides off the width we want. We've made, we've oversized the bearing to where we can machine out about 20 thousandths inside and it'll fit the crank. And uh, we should be ready to go. Thank you for joining us today on The Restoration Garage, and we hope you'll go to our website and check us out at www.therestorationgarage.com. And uh, hopefully you'll see something there you can use, and we'd love to hear your comments regarding this video. Have a great day.